Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another Raspberry Pi hands-on tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to work with a GPIO extension board. For this tutorial, in addition to a Raspberry Pi board with a micro SD card with the Raspberry Pi OS installed and a power supply, you also need an LED, a 330 ohm resistor, a breadboard, some jumper wires, and a GPIO extension board. If you watched the prior videos in the playlist, you'll recall that I had put my Pi in an enclosure, and in the last video, I ran jumper wires from the GPIO header on the Pi to the breadboard to connect the circuit to the pins on the board. In this video, because we'll be using a GPIO extension board, I've removed all the jumper wires connected to the Pi and have connected the extension board's ribbon cable to the GPIO header. Then, I've plugged the extension board into a breadboard. Now, instead of running jumper wires from the Pi itself to the breadboard, all of the circuit's components and wires will be placed on the breadboard itself with no need to plug into the Pi. Now, before we move on and take a look at the circuit, let's talk about what an extension board is. So a GPIO extension board is used to lead out pins from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header so you don't have to connect and remove jumper wires from the header directly. This leads to less interaction with the Pi and its header itself, which means less potential damage to the pins on the Pi. Also, the labeling on the extension board is easier to read. When working with the GPIO extension board, it's going to be important to keep the board's documentation handy as this will map the numbered pins on the extension board to the pins on the Pi. Now, for connecting to the Pi, if you have a keyboard, mouse, and monitor hooked up, you can simply boot the Pi and log in. However, as I showed in the Getting Started video, I'll be connecting to my Pi using the VNC viewer running on an M1 Mac. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on and take a look at the circuit. On the breadboard, I've run 5 volt power and ground from the corresponding pins at the top of the extension board to the breadboard's rails. I then connected the leads from the cooling fan in my Pi's enclosure to the positive and negative rails on the board. These can be seen in the upper left hand corner of this image. For the circuit itself, I added a red LED to the breadboard with one end running to ground and the other connected to the 330 ohm resistor. The other end of the resistor is connected to GPIO 17 by a single jumper wire. And that's it for the circuit itself, so let's take a look at the code. Looking at the code, first we import the RPI GPIO library from GPIO and also import time. Then I'm declaring a variable for the red LED pin, which is pin 11 or GPIO 17. The setup function calls the setMode method on GPIO, setting the board's physical locations, and then the setup method is called on GPIO, passing the red LED pin, and setting its mode as output. Finally, the output method is called, passing the red LED pin, and turning the LED off to initialize. The main process definition loop is an infinite loop, which calls the output method on GPIO, passing the red pin and turning the LED on. Then it sleeps before turning the LED off and sleeping again before iterating through the loop. The destroy function calls the output method on GPIO, passing it the pin and turning the LED off, and then finally calling cleanup. Now with the sketch saved, if we run the app and go over to the board, we'll see our LED toggling on and off. So that concludes this video on working with a GPIO extension board. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another Raspberry Pi video soon.